non-existent in this plane why i don't abide with anybody no i ain't the same what is up people and welcome to another video. You've probably heard of things like AI and ChatGPT and language models and you've probably heard sayings like these machines are going to be taking over our lives. Well today we're going to be taking a look at how we can use these machines to our advantage and enhance our engineering capabilities using OpenAI. Today you'll be learning what OpenAI is and how it works and even how to write a small application that uses AI. Now this video will set you up for success, especially in the technical world where you always have to keep up to date with the latest crazes. So without further ado, let's go. You have most likely by now heard of ChatGPT, but what is it? ChatGPT stands for Chat Generate Pre-Trained Transformer. What? In simple terms, it's a chatbot built by OpenAI, which uses prompt engineering, meaning you can communicate to it by text-to-text -text conversation. The way the bot understands you is because it's trained on a model. For example, the GPT 3.5 model or the GPT 4 model. The word transformer comes from an architecture that the model is based on. These models are a type of large language models, LLM, which are a framework of generative AI. Now, I'm not a machine learning expert, but I'd like to think of a model as a super database. Think of times when you need to write a SQL query and you need to join a bunch of data tables or get data out of Excel spreadsheets and join them. This can become complicated when you're writing complex SQL queries and it can ultimately slow down the database. And this is ultimately because of the way the data is stored. Now, the thing that impresses me about machine learning models is the way the data returns insanely fast. In a large language model like GPT, if I ask ChatGPT a question like what is the difference between VMs, containers and Kubernetes, it's going to give me an answer almost immediately. But how does it find, query and compute this so quickly? This is where transformer architectures or neural network architectures come in, with technology like attention, beam search and greedy decoding comes in. Now this is a little bit beyond the scope of an introduction video to AI, but I'd like to think of a model as a super database where we can simply query it with text. So this is the introduction to AI. But firstly, what is OpenAI? I've put a link in the README to the OpenAI website. You can go to openai.com. Now, OpenAI is a research and development company that focuses on creating AI. And you can see here, they do a lot of research on AI, research and development, but they mainly also focus on an API. So they focus on standardized and development practices using AI. So think of standard practices that you're familiar with, like HTTP, TCP, and email. These are standard protocols that us engineers use every day. Now, OpenAI helps to develop standard protocols around how to use AI in development so you can build apps on top of AI. Now, the best way to start is go over to the OpenAI website and click the login button. You can go ahead and register for a new account. It is completely free and pretty easy to set up. And once you have an account, you can go over and try ChatGPT. Or if you already have an account, it'll take you to platform.openai dot com slash apps and there are multiple apps you can use we'll start with chat gpt you can just go ahead and click that and that'll take you to the chat gpt web page now chat gpt is basically just a chat bot that is built on top of open ai so you get to this page and you can start sending it a message and talk to it and it will send you responses you can select which model to use. So the GPT 3.5 is a fast model and it's free. And then you have GPT 4, which is a slightly larger, more up-to-date model with slightly more enhanced features. So think of these models as like the database you want to query. Now GPT 3.5 has some limitations. It has a smaller token set. We'll talk about tokens in a bit, but it also is only trained up until September 2021. So it doesn't know of very recent events but it is still good for everyday use. So now I can go ahead and ask it things like, what is Kubernetes? If I send that, it'll immediately give me an answer on what Kubernetes is. Now, how does AI actually help humanity? What is the hype around all of this? 
there is a lot of negative sentiment towards AI, which I'm going to show you, but I'm also going to show you how to take advantage of it. When you hear people say AI is going to take over our jobs and it makes people lazy and our brains are going to deteriorate because AI does everything for us. It's going to do all the school kids assignments and I can actually use it to pass an interview test without knowing how to do the job. Now, sure I can. So yes, I can ask ChatGPT what is Kubernetes and I can simply go ahead and copy paste these answers into my assignments if I'm someone at uni or school. And in the long run, this may not help my own learning skills. Or I can go ahead and maybe frame my question or my prompt a little bit differently and take advantage of AI to boost my own learning skills. So let's say I can go and say, what is Kubernetes and provide me with some documentation links and references. And when I do that, ChatGPT will actually come back and the AI will provide me with some links and references to all the information it gives me here. So you can see here at the bottom, it has gone ahead and given me links to the official documentation. It's given me links to some online tutorials where I can play with Kubernetes. It gives me some online courses, community resources like the Reddit and the Slack channel, as well as the Kubernetes YouTube channel and some YouTube channel recommendations. So now it's going to go ahead and surface me some real world information that I can use to deep dive in. And I can ask it for things like links, blogs and videos, and I can actually use AI to my advantage and learn something. And this is also important if you're someone like a student, a medical student or a science student, you cannot simply rely on copy pasting data out of ChatGPT, but you can use it to surface some real world data and information. And you can get some real research material with references and references to actual scientific studies. So I'd like to think of it as a Google search on steroids. Now it doesn't end here. This is actually only where things begin. So now I would like to show you how you can use AI to build real world powerful applications, especially as a developer or an ops person that wants to use AI to empower teams. So I want to show you something really cool. Once you're logged into OpenAI, go to platform.openai.com. And then what you can do is go to the playground link at the top menu. Now this is where things get really interesting. And this is where we can build and train AI for our application. So let's go ahead and build an AI app that helps troubleshoot Kubernetes deployments. Now just a few things about this UI. We have the mode. So we have a chat mode. So this will give you a facility here where you can talk. So I can type a user message in here. And when I submit this, I'll get a response from AI. I'll get a response from the model that I've selected here. And here you can see I'm using the GPT 3.5 turbo model. There are a number of models that you can pick from here. And most importantly, there's the system message. Now the system message is basically how we're going to train our AI. So we type sort of a system definition as a system message and the AI response will be based around the system message that we pass in. But it's also important to note that the answers will also be based on the model. So if it's something that you have not trained it to do, it'll simply give you a response similar to what ChatGPT would give you. So what I can do here is I can go to my system text and I can say, you are a Kubernetes expert that can assist developers with troubleshooting deployments. And then in my user message, I can go ahead and ask it and say, hey, my deployment has failed. Can you help? So if I submit this, look what happens. It'll come up with the response saying, I'm happy to help troubleshoot your deployment. Can you please provide me with more information, such an issue or error message or logs that you have? I can then go ahead and add a message and say, my pod is crashing. And it will come up with some useful response here about certain kubectl log commands and get pods and things that I can run. So it will kind of guide me in the right direction in terms of how to troubleshoot my Kubernetes deployment. Now, this is something developers can already do with ChatGPT, but what makes OpenAI special and what makes it special is that I can go ahead in the system message and I can train it further. So you can see my, my answers that it's giving me here is simple recommendations that I can get from ChatGPT by just chatting. I can actually extend the system text further and do something like, if you need, ask for the name of the namespace and generate a command that a developer can surface logs or information. So now I can tell the AI to provide me with kubectl command so it can generate the full command rather than if you look at this closely you'll see that it has placeholders in the commands to run so now when i send a message to it i can say my pod is crashing can you help and it'll say of course i'll do my best can you provide me with the name of the pod and the namespace it belongs to so now i can say my pod is product one two three 
and my namespace is products and then go ahead and submit that. And now you can see I'm getting better formed responses. Now I'm actually getting kubectl commands that I can go and run. So the AI is giving me a full kubectl command with the pod name and the namespace filters that I can use to go and get the pods. I can then do kubectl logs as well as the kubectl describe command. So I'm training the AI to make it a little bit more smarter to give me tailored results of what I'm looking for. Now, one thing to notice is there can be a bit of quirks at the moment. So you can see here I've said, hey, my pod is crashing, can you help? It's asked me for the namespace and the name of the pod. And I've gone ahead and only given it the name of the pod, not the namespace. And then it's gone ahead and generated me still some kubectl commands where it's saying your namespace. So it still has placeholders for the namespace and it's not giving me the full kubectl command that I asked for. So this means I just have to go ahead and tweak the system text to make it a little bit more accurate and descriptive of exactly what I want. So what I can do is I can just add another paragraph here to say to help the developer, you will need to know the namespace as well as the pod name. Ask for missing information. So now if I ask it and I only give the pod name, it's going to repeatedly ask me for the namespace as well. So now I have a look at my system text. I basically say to help the developer, you will need to know the namespace and the name of the pod. I've taken out the text that says if you need, because technically it doesn't need to know the namespace or the name of the pod, but I wanted to ask for the missing information information. And then when I say my pod is crashing, can you help? It's asking for the name of the pod as well as the namespace. I give it only the pod name and then it will come back and say, can you give me the name of the namespace as well? I will be able to generate a command to help you troubleshoot the issue. So it's very important that we provide very accurate descriptive system text of exactly what we want. So the AI becomes smarter and gives us tailored results. So we can already tell that AI is pretty good at gathering data. It can go back and forth and gather other things like pod names, deployment names, namespace names, config map names, and it can actually help you generate the kubectl commands to supply that to the developer and make recommendations. So it can be a really good AI to troubleshoot things and it can suggest potential places where the developer can look like kubectl describe pod or describe deployment, the get commands as well as the log commands. And we can tailor the AI to tell it exactly where we want it to focus on rather than giving very vague responses. So so how can this be used in an organization? Well, firstly, you can use AI just like we did to surface up information and data and references as well as documentation to boost our own knowledge. Or you can use it to train AI to help something in like operational flow, like developers troubleshooting Kubernetes deployments. We can even take what we have done and wrap it into a Docker image and deploy it to our environment. So now I can show you something really cool. If you take a look at the playground that we've been working working on, there's a little button at the top here called view code. And if you click that, you can select the programming language of your choice. I will pick Python. And it basically gives you the code of everything we've just done. If you wanted to wrap this into an application, then this will give you the foundation to build a Docker image and to add some code to it. So before we start and grab that code, what I've done is I've got a little example here about how to build an AI powered app. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a little main.py, which is a Python application. And and we're going to write a small application that just takes in a message and that'll be our message that we're going to be sending to the AI. So what I'm going to do, if you take a look at my source code on the left here, I have an AI folder and in here I have open AI folder with an introduction folder and in there I have the readme, which is the guide that we're taking a look at today. And if I take a look at here, what I've done is I've written up a quick Docker file. We'll take a look at that in a second, but it's based on Python. We have a main.py, which I'm going to be building. So this main.py, py is currently empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my readme file and in our readme file, we have this import sys. I'm going to copy this and what this is going to do is just take in an input as a message. I'm going to go ahead and copy this and put this into my main.py. And then what I'm ready to do is go ahead and grab the code from the playground. So on the playground over here, what we're going to do is hit this copy button, basically copy it, and we'll take a quick, quick walk through this. And then in my main.py, I'm just going to go ahead and paste it. So what I'll do is just scroll to the top. I'm just going to 
to neaten up these import statements by grouping them all together. And what we're doing here is we're grabbing a message as input, storing that in a message variable. And now the, the code that's been given to us by the playground looks like this. It's just a small little block. And all it does here is takes in an API key through an environment variable. We'll take a look at how to get an API key in a, in a minute. And then what it does it is creates this chat completion dialogue. And you can see here that what it does is it has a messages array and it has firstly messages with different roles. One message is wrapped in an object. So it's role is system. And then all the user messages that basically is the messages that we've just set up in that playground. Now the system message is important because that is training the AI. So we're going to need the system message, but we can basically go ahead and get rid of all these user messages as we don't need them. And then there are some settings that we can set up as well. And we can tweak this and tune it with a configuration file if needed. So now that we've taken out the user messages in here, we're going to need to craft the user message. So what I do is I take message as an input here, and then I'm going to create a user message object, which is basically role user. And the content is the message that's coming in. And I'm going to take this user message and we're just going to append it to this array over here. Now I'm going to improve this a little bit by taking out the system message over here and moving it into its own variable. So just like I do the user message where I populate the user message, I'm going to go ahead and create a system message over here. Let's move the API key to the very top. And now you can see I have my system message. I've moved it out and let's go ahead and create an empty uh, array. Just call it user messages and let's create an empty message. This is the final message that we're going to send to the API. AI, and we'll say messages dot append we append the system message as well as extend the user message so we pass in user messages over here and then basically what i'm going to do instead of uh, hard coding my messages in the chat completion i can just pass it in like this so just to summarize firstly what we do we import the library for OpenAI. we get the api key that we're going to use we grab the input message coming to us from the user we have our system message we create a messages array we append the system message to the messages array and then we append the user message to the messages array and pass that to the open AI chat completion. Now the only missing piece is to get the response. So I'm going to create a new variable called response message and from the chat completion you can get the response inside the choices array dot message dot content. This is how you grab the response from the AI and we can go ahead and write a print statement and we can just throw this message into the print statement. Now if you get stuck I I have put this entire source code on GitHub with the link down below. So check out the link in the description for the source code. And I have a step-by-step -step guide of how I got there. So this is the step to build an app. We've gone through the steps here. Next is to build our Docker image. So what I'm going to do is change directory into the AI OpenAI introduction folder. So I'm going to go ahead and change directory. And once I'm in there, we can see we have our Docker file right there. So then I can go ahead and build my Docker container. So I do that by saying, docker build dot minus t and i'm just going to call my container ai app this is what i'm going to call my image so i go and paste that to the terminal and that'll build up my container now to take a look at that docker image it's very simple on the left hand side here in the ai open ai introduction folder i have a docker file and this is just a python 3.11 alpine image and what we do is we just create a working directory we copy our dependency file in do pip install on that copy our main.py in and we just run that main.py. Very simple Docker image. Now to run our container, we're going to need an OpenAI API key. So what you're going to want to do is just go back to the platform openai.com website, go to your personal icon here and click on view API keys. And then what you can do is create a new secret key. I'm just going to call this test one, two, three, create that key. And once you have that key, remember to keep it safe and keep it secret. So what I'm going to do is I've documented the step, but I need to set my OpenAI API key as an environment variable. I'm just going to go ahead and set that in the terminal like so, and I will paste the value inside there. Now, once I've set the value, I can go ahead and run my application. So I say docker run minus IT, I pass an environment variable in, and I'm going to set that environment variable to the value that I've just set before, and I'm going to run my AI app container image. So I go ahead, go to the terminal, paste that, and we can run it. 
and notice I'm getting some text back. So now I can go ahead and ask it a question by doing docker run and notice that my argument for the container is my actual question. So I go ahead and run that and now it's coming back with an answer to say to generate a command for the developer to service logs I would need to know the namespace and the pod name. Could you provide me with those details? So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this container again and this time I'm going to tell it that my pod name is 123. Go ahead and run that. Now notice that we're hitting some quirks. It's neat, it needs to know the, the namespace and the pod name and it's going to keep going into a loop. I can go ahead and try to give it the name of the namespace and tell it that's the product namespace and now it's asking me for the name of the pod. I can then go ahead and give it the name of the pod and notice it's asking me again for the namespace. So it's having some trouble with memory and it can't record and remember what information I've already provided it. And this is because if we take a look at the chat completion section here, we're passing it the message that the user is sending. So the message that we've passed as a system message as well as the message of the user. We're not giving it the entire history of the conversation and OpenAI does not have any memory and if we take a look at the playground example again notice that this message array has the history of the conversation as we're typing now the AI playground works because as you're typing stuff in the playground the AI playground keeps a history of the conversation so it keeps all the user messages as well as the AI messages and the system message and keeps passing all of it to the API automatically and it keeps appending new messages from the AI and the user message to the messages array now it's a known issue that the AI does not have any state. It's completely stateless and doesn't have a concept of memory. And there are other libraries to help create that. And this is something that we'll need to add. So let's go ahead and take a look at our code and add a small JSON file as a cache where we can keep the user messages and keep a history to make our AI work. So what I've done is I've updated the code to basically keep track of the conversation in a JSON file and then use that as my cache. Now, if we take a look at the code here, I have a full example written here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this full example. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at this and walk, walk through it quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and replace everything we've done with this code in the main.py file. So let's walk through that quickly. Basically still have my same imports. You can see I have JSON now because I'm gonna deal with the JSON file. I take in my OpenAI key as we did before. I take the user message in from input. I have the system message here as a constant. And then I created a user message array, which I'm gonna leave empty to start with. Then if this message's JSON file exists, I'm gonna open it and read it and load it into the user messages array. If it doesn't exist, it's just gonna be blank. Then I append to that user messages array, the latest message that's coming in to the Docker container. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna update my cache. So I'm gonna open the file and I'm gonna open it in write mode. So if it doesn't exist, it'll create it. If it exists, it's simply going to update it and override it. Then I write the user messages to the file and I just print it out for debugging purpose. Then what we do is we create our final message object. We append the system message, which is the constant, and we append all the user messages and we create our chat completion and read the response. So that's the very simple AI application. Now to build it, what we're going to do is just do another Docker build on that container image that'll go ahead and build it. And I created some examples here of how you can talk to the AI. So these are the docker run commands you can run. So I've got a docker run command that says, can you help me with my deployment? You should see the output of it asking you for a namespace or a pod name. You give it a pod name and you should now see that it has memory capabilities. So it's going to provide, it's going to ask you now for the namespace and then you give it the, the namespace and then it will recommend you a command to run. So let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to copy that first docker run command. I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm gonna paste it. Now, if we take a look at our source code on the top left here, you can see that there is a message now. And if we take a look at that message, this is the user message that we've just typed in. Take a look at the terminal. You can see it's happy to help us. Can we provide with a namespace and a pod name? So then what I'm gonna do is just head over back to my readme. I'm gonna copy the next line, which is basically us giving it a 
pod name. I'm now telling it what my pod name is. Go ahead and run that. And you can see now it's asking for a namespace. And if I take a look at my message, we can go to the messages. You can see that it's working as a cache. So it has the history of the messages. It just keeps appending it there. So now I told it that it's in the products namespace. And now you can see it's, it's giving me um, the answer here. So it says, sure, I can help with that. And here's the kubectl command to run. So it's recommending and generating me the right kubectl command. So every time we send a message to our application, it's going to go ahead and cache that message in a JSON file. And what it does is it will pass the history of the conversation to OpenAI on every message. And this will unfortunately blow up the cost slightly, but this is a known thing with OpenAI. Now there are libraries that take care of it and some cloud provider even have their own implementation of keeping a, a history count. So you can configure it to keep a history so that you don't have to send the entire conversation. So hopefully this video helped you understand the fundamentals of ChatGPT and OpenAI and set you on the path to write your first chatbot. Let me know down in the comments below, how do you use AI and what sort of videos you'd like like me to cover in the future and if you like to support the channel even further check the patreon link down below or click the join button to become a youtube member and as always thanks for watching and until next time peace